Hi everyone, Dr. Nimichek here. I want to talk to you about the variety of symptoms that bacterial overgrowth or SIBO can cause. As most people think it's just diarrhea and uh, like gastroenterologists they're oh it's probably just it's just diarrhea. If it's not that you don't have it. Totally wrong. Totally wrong. First, uh, there's some studies that suggest that maybe you know 25-30% of the patients don't have any intestinal symptoms. Okay, so that can make this a little confusing to try to figure out. Now, some people go and do the, the old fashioned, you know, hydrogen methane breath test. Those tests are wrong like 20, 30 percent of the time. They're useless. You can't use them for diagnosis. You kind of have to use the, the symptom set that you're faced with. Anyhow, intestinal symptoms, yes, bacterial overgrowth can cause diarrhea or it can cause frequent stools. Okay, and mainly. Uh, or more commonly, I eat, then I have to go to the bathroom. Not with everything, but enough that, you know, if you're going to a restaurant, you're a little worried that you can make it home before you have to go to the bathroom again. So you can have frequent form stools or loose stools. Add to that in particular if it's linked with uh, a particular food, like, man, whenever I eat lettuce, I got horrible diarrhea or really bad cream or even heartburn. So these nightshades, you know, peppers, tomatoes, whatnot, or certain spices or chocolate and coffee, they often go together. Um, uh, I mean, fish oil, olive oil, all, all sorts of stuff. You're like this one or two things, boy, I get really bad heartburn, but I don't with other foods. That's a very, very common sign of bacterial overgrowth. And if you treat yourself with some rifaximin, uh, you'll find within, you know, a few days to uh, a week or two that it's dramatically better. Okay. And remember, the only thing rifaximin can do is fix bacterial overgrowth. So it's kind of use of rifaximin is, is one of the ways I kind of help kind of diagnose things. So one, particular food intolerance. Okay. Now, one note about diarrhea and intestinal symptoms. Red flags for a doctor. This means these are the things we worry about. Diarrhea with fever, blood in the stool, mucus in the stool, those things, go see your doctor, okay? You can have a blood, a, uh, a bad intestinal infection, or you can have something like Crohn's or C. diff, so it's very important. Fever, mucus, uh, blood, I should add, significant abdominal pain, go to your gastroenterologist. Don't fiddle around with a prebiotic or a rifaximin. Okay, you gotta get that taken care of. Now, so beyond the intestinal stuff, uh, you can have temperature regulation, seemingly. And mainly it's night sweats. And I don't mean being like, oh boy, it's hot at night. I mean, you're sweating so much, you typically or may have to occasionally change your t-shirt or nightgown, okay? That is typically SIBO. That can be other things, but they're very unusual things, like tuberculosis can do that, okay? But your typical infections won't do that, but SIBO can do that. Now, from a gynecological standpoint, SIBO, and I haven't seen this <laughs> any paper on this, but it's every time, severe menstrual cramps, painful, hard to go to work, hard to go to school, hard to function, that level, okay, of menstrual cramps, 10 days of rifaximin, usually in one or two cycles, normal, all right? And uh, sometimes people are looking at endometriosis and worrying about that, but there's actually a few papers now starting to link SIBO as maybe the driving mechanism for endometriosis, interestingly. So it can cause uh, some symptoms like that. Now, it doesn't cause PMS, okay, the moodiness and, and hunger and fatigue and things like that, but the the severe menstrual cramps, what we call dysmenorrhea, can do that. Uh, it can trigger a big inflammatory response. And people just hurt all over. I mean, like all over. Muscles can hurt, or they focus on the joints, kind of just like this fluey kind of feeling. Uh, without any other significant source, SIBO is a, a prime suspect for that. It can trigger your allergy tests to look like you've got a wide range of food intolerances or allergies, which is not true. It doesn't happen that way. It's just that the leaky gut that SIBO will trigger 
allows almost anything you're eating to be kind of pop positive on a test. So if you have a whole bunch of food intolerances, you know, it's not like you're allergic to everything. There's a good chance that that test is a false positive and it's due to SIBO. And then we know that the, we, we know, you know, the bacteria in the small intestine by design talk to our hormone system, our immune system, and our autonomic nervous system through the sympathetic fibers and the vagus nerve. And so you can have as one of your signs of SIBO is when I eat certain foods, I've had people where when I eat certain foods, I almost pass out or I get a horrible headache or I can't think or focus, okay? Because the bacteria that are overgrowing are now in these channels kind of talking to your brain in an abnormal way. Again, a 10 day course of refactment, people are like, wow, a lot better. Okay. And then finally, emotionally, uh, generalized anxiety, where you got a ton of anxiety, no real reason, no particular reason why this is, is happening. Um, bacterial overgrowth is a significant subset of those patients, not all of them, okay, but uh, a, a lot of them. And especially if you have like the nervous stomach kind of concept, like, oh, when I'm in stressful situation like a diarrhea and I'm really anxious actually instead of nervous people think it's the anxiety causing the intestinal symptoms so they have a nervous stomach it's actually you have a stomach nervous the intestinal bacteria are actually which cause intestinal symptoms but are the thing that are magnifying the anxiety that's really how it goes and that can often go away within 10 days of refaxment so I hope that helps everybody. Have a good weekend. Take care now.